Welcome to our lecture online. So what is the significance of the change in the Hubble constant? Remember that initially Hubble determined that it was about 500 kilometers per second per megaparsec. Of course, over the years, we've gotten better and better instruments, better and better capability. And now we've determined that it's somewhere between 67 and 73. So what does it matter? What's the difference? How does it affect things that we look at in astronomy? Well, here we have, again, the very famous graph where on the vertical axis we have velocity, on the horizontal axis we have distance, and here this line represents the linear relationship between velocity, recessional velocity, it's the speed at which galaxies move away from us, and how far those galaxies are in megaparsec. Remember that mega means million, one parsec is 3.26 light years, so one megaparsec is 3.26 million light years away which is quite a distance. So, how does it really work in real, how do, I mean, how does it really work in astronomy? Well, it's easy to figure out the speed at which things move away from us. We use this equation right here, where the recessional velocity equals the speed of light times the change in the wavelength of the light that we look at, because as the object is moving away from us, the light that reaches us has been redshifted. That means that the wavelengths have gotten bigger. And then we divide that by the original wavelength, the wavelength that we, sh that we would see if the object wasn't moving at all. So for the H alpha line, the, the, the light that we see from hydrogen, which is of course the most common element in the universe, when the electrons jump from the third level back down to the second level, we see a wavelength of 656.3 nanometers. So let's say we look at a galaxy far away and we measure the shift in the wave. But otherwise, we, we measure the wavelength that we see from the object, and let's say that instead of 656.3 nanometers, we see it at 657.4 nanometers. Notice that this is a bigger number. It's been shifted towards a larger wavelength. That means it's been shifted towards the red. We call that red shifted. So let's calculate the velocity of that object. Let's assume that it's a galaxy. So we say that the velocity is equal to C, which is 300 thousand kilometers per second. We multiply that times the difference in the wavelength. Notice it went from 656.3 to 657.4, which is a change of 1.1. And we divide that by the original wavelength. If the object wasn't moving, we would see it as 656.3. Notice that the units nanometers cancel out, so we don't have to write those. And let's calculate what that is equal to. So we have 300,000 times 1.1 divided by 656.3, and we get 502.8, uh, let's just call it 500 kilometers per second. You can see that I worked this out before the video because I wanted something pretty close to this number right there. All right, so let's say that we determine now that it's moving away from us at 500 kilometers per second. So we go to our diagram, the Hubble law diagram. We go to the vertical axis. We find 500 kilometers per second. We come up here till we hit that line. We come straight down here. We go, there it is. The galaxy is one megaparsec away, meaning it's 3.26 million light years away. So that's the assumption, presuming that the Hubble constant that we have, that in this case, H sub naught is equal to 500 kilometers per second per megaparsec, which means for each one megaparsec distance, it moves at 500 kilometers per second, which means if it was two megaparsecs away, two megaparsecs, that would be right here, it would be moving at a thousand kilometers per second. All right, but now we realize that the Hubble constant wasn't 500 kilometers per second, it's more like 73 kilometers per second. And again, we're not even 100% sure of that. But let's say it was 73 kilometers per second, which means our Hubble constant graph would look very, very different. The slope would not be nearly as steep. Remember, the slope is the ratio of the rise over the run. So we'd have a much bigger run over the same rise for a much smaller slope. So let's go over here until we hit this line right there. And of course, I need to make my arrow a little bit bigger. There we go, make my arrow bigger. And what would be the new distance if we now assume that H sub naught is equal to 73 kilometers per second per megaparsec. 
All right. So the number of megaparsecs is equal to the velocity that we have divided by h sub naught, the Hubble constant. So in this case, we said that the velocity measured, that would not change. It's still the same galaxy moving at the same speed. That would still be the same thing. It would be 500 kilometers per second. That's what we measure. But now we divide it by a very different Hubble constant. The new Hubble constant, which we think it's 573 kilometers per second per megaparsec. Oh, I don't need that here. And so what would be the new distance estimated based upon that? So now we take 500 divided by 73, and now it comes out to be about 6.85. So that would be equal to 6.85 megaparsec. Notice the difference. In 1929, Hubble would have looked at that very same galaxy, measured the recessional velocity, which would be relatively easy to do back then, would get a change in the wavelength, the shift, it would calculate the velocity, and it go, ah, since the Hubble constant that I estimated is 500 kilometers per second per megaparsec, I know that the galaxy is one megaparsec away. But now that we know the value is not at all 500 kilometers per second per megaparsec, but now we know it's more like 73, we take the velocity divided by the new Hubble constant, 500 divided by 73, and we get almost 7 megaparsec away. So this would be 6.85 megaparsec. So that means we get a very different picture of the universe. That very same galaxy that Hubble looked at, to him, would have looked like it was 1 megaparsec away. But now we realize that the galaxy is more like 7 megaparsecs away, which is like over 20 million light years. Gives us a very different picture of the universe, and that's why we're so interested in getting that accurate value, because 73 is still not necessarily the right value. We know that it's somewhere between 67 and 74, which is what we know today, but who knows tomorrow. We may have different results from very valid different experiments, and the number may shift again. Time will always will give us a better value. We'll get a better value in the future when we just do a better and better job trying to estimate what that constant is equal to. But if you ask me what's the significance, there it is. It gives us a very different picture of the universe one way or the other. And that is how it's done. The Hubble is long enough to know that the constant... Yeah, his constant was constantly changing. <laughs> he knew that. It was changing. He, he knew that he estimated too big and that the number... I don't remember how long he lived, but yeah, even like in the 1930s, the number started coming down already, especially since they realized that he gave us an age of 2 billion years for the universe, which was younger than we figured the Earth was. So yeah, it, it didn't make sense at the time. It was a good estimate, a good start, but right away we began to revise it. Just, if all the universe is moving away from us, when do we ever get blue shift? Well, it turns out the Andromeda galaxy is blue shifting which means it's coming towards us, which means we're going to collide with the Andromeda galaxy. And because we're gravitationally pulling on one another, and so we're going to be spiraling inward, the estimate in about a billion years, kaboom. We're dead. Yeah, but I wouldn't worry about it. It's a long time from now. Even for you. Well, especially for me. <laughs> Are you done? Yeah. Done for today.